All right. Welcome to Money Club Mondays, uh, June 20th, 2022. So today we're going to do a review of the Private Money Club and uh, what to expect if you're a new lender or a new borrower, how you can maximize when you first join the Private Money Club and some things to do to get started uh, and get off to a, a, a hot um, start with you know, either getting your money lent out or, or borrowing money. So I'm going to walk through the Private Money Club today and go through some things. So any questions you have, anything that you've been on the Private Money Club and you're wondering about, or if you're a lender and you just don't know the best way to get started, like, I want you guys to put your questions in for me today. So this is going to be more interactive today. So put your questions in there. Um, you know, if you're a borrower and you, you, you know, what have you done so far? Have you put money? Have you put your deal on the private money club? Have you been on money club Mondays? Things like that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So please get your questions ready and your comments ready. And I want to make sure that I hit all of that for everybody that's on there. So Joanne was saying she's a lender, but needs smaller amounts. All right, cool. So let's, let's do this. So let me, sh so before I share my screen, um, you know, the private money club was put together to basically connect lenders and borrowers and borrowers and lenders in a nice safe community where you can build a relationship and we can create these win-win situations for years to come. And at the end of the day, that's all this is doing is it's a community for creating win-win situations. Because if you have money, but you don't necessarily have the time to go out there and actively invest in real estate and do all the work it takes to own rental properties or do a flip or something of that nature, you know, you're looking for more of that like passive income. So how can you put your money out there to work for you? So that money creates more money that then comes back to you. And if you're a borrower, a lot of times, you know, maybe you uh, you're in real estate full time, maybe your career, you're a real estate investor, uh, and you're just looking to scale and get bigger and bigger because what happens in the evolution of every real estate investor is you get to a point where you're doing more deals than you have money and banks, uh, you know, look at debt to income ratios and they look at how much your net assets are and, and everything like that. And that's how they determine if they want to lend to you. And at some point you hit a limit when it comes to traditional financing from banks where they won't lend you any more money, or maybe you're doing too many deals at one time and the bank just says, we don't want to lend you the money. And you know, one of the things about real estate investing is, you know, a lot of times you're using other people's money, you're using what's called leverage. So you're putting maybe 10, 20% down of your own money, but then you're borrowing the other 80, 90%, sometimes more, maybe you're borrowing the rehab costs, stuff like that. So you're leveraging though, what you do have to be able to get more. And so at some point, traditional banks typically will stop lending. And that's when people go to private money. So then, you know, people like myself, like Chris, like, um, Shay, Sonia, Gary, Andrew, Claire, all the lenders that are on here right now that I'm, I'm reading in the comments, you know, they're like, okay, we want, well, we're willing to lend out that deal because we want to put our money out there to make more money for us. So that's all the private money club is at the end of the day is when I ask who's a lender and who's a borrower over here in the comments, you know, Kevin's a borrower, Dexter's a borrower, Mary's a borrower. It's like, okay, Mary, Dexter, and Kevin, let me introduce you to Claire, Shay, Sonia, Gary, Andrew, myself. We're all lenders. So we're willing to lend you the money. So that's all the private money clubs at the end of the day. Now, obviously, whenever you're dealing with money and investments, there's a lot more to it. So you always want to make sure that not only is the investment a good investment, which we'll talk about how to underwrite deals here today. But you also want to think about, does it make sense for you? And if something goes wrong, what's the worst case scenario? Are you going to lose all your money? Is your money protected by something? Do you have recourse if, if the terms of that deal that you negotiate don't happen? You know, what, what, what's the recourse in that? So, um, you know, making sure that the deals are done properly from the beginning of making sure it's the right deal and the right person to lend to, to making sure the paperwork is in order, the contracts are done properly. And then we're working in all 50 different states. You know, we have borrowers and lenders from all across the United States of America. So, and then there's laws that are involved. Like you never, you should never lend to an individual. You should always lend to a company. That was thanks to what are called the Dodd-Frank rules that came into existence uh, about about a decade ago. So then there's rules and laws that we have to follow to make sure that things are done legally. 
Uh, so there's a lot to it, you know, at the end of the day that goes into a private money deal. But the wonderful thing with this is once you do one or two deals, it, it's, it's not hard. There's a lot to it, but it's not hard. It's fairly easy, actually. And especially once you do one or two deals, you can see and you just get into like a little flow of doing it over and over. And then you build that relationship where, you know, Claire here lends money to Kevin or Mary. And then after that deal's done, Mary says, okay, Claire, here's your money back. And Claire says, well, do you have another deal? How about I just, how about I just lend you again the next day that money right back into the next deal? And that way you don't even have to look for it again. You already underwrote the lender. Now you just got to underwrite that specific deal and make sure that deal is good. And then you have your money lent out that much quicker. Because when you get the money back as a lender, a lot of times you don't want the money back. Because if you have the money back sitting in your account, it's not doing anything. It's not out there working for you anymore. So you want to get that money back out there as quickly as possible. So developing that relationship where you can lend the money over and over and over again becomes very, very valuable. All right. So any questions just on the basics there? If you have any questions as we go, just please put them in the Q&A box or the chat box. And I'll just answer those as we get rolling. So Eve's asking, does the private money club organizers read through the borrowers deals to see if it makes sense and have template contracts in place for borrowers and lenders to use? So great, Eve, we'll talk about that as we get into looking at the private money club right now. Um, because it's kind of yes and no is the answer to that. I'll show you what I mean as we get going here with different types of deals uh, that you're looking for. So let me share my screen. So, all right, so this is the Private Money Club. Um, of course, you guys know it's in beta phase. 25 of you uh, were lenders on the development of the new Private Money Club, which will be released in October. So until then, this is still a beta version. Um, what that means if you're kind of new to this is uh, we developed the Private Money Club with our in-house web development team last year just to kind of launch it and, and do a kind of a proof of concept to say, hey, if we build a community for borrowers and lenders, will they actually go in there and use it? And uh, it was a resounding success. We had a lot, a lot of successful transactions and money going through the Private Money Club. And a lot of people were able to lend money from their banking policies, from their self-directed IRAs, for money they pulled out of the stock market because of the volatility. And they were able to put in these pre predictable, consistent returns that are private money loans. And so, um, and a lot of, you know, our money school students and people that are kind of new to the money school community that are getting started with real estate investing and taking classes either through Justin Colby or through Pace Morby or um, through one of our other, uh, you know, coaches and, and trainers when it comes to the active real estate side. And they were able to come in the private money club and start raising funds. You know, Chris Root has raised a lot of funds you guys probably have lent to and, and things like that. So uh, once we saw that, you know, private money club is a good success and kind of work out some of the, this is what we wanted to do. This is what we don't want it to do. This is what we want it to look like. This is what we want the customer experience to feel like. So we were able to test that over the last year or so. And um, so just a few months ago, we hired a company to build out the private money clubs exactly how we want it from the ground up. Um, and not only a web version, but also um, an app for your phone. So there will be an iPhone as well as an Android app. You can go right into the marketplace and download the app. And if you're a member, you'll have access to everything just like on the website, but now on a nice little app. Um, and the best way to look at what the app's gonna be is the app's gonna be very, very simple to use. So if you guys have ever been on like any of these dating sites, like, um, like eHarmony, or uh, what is like Tinder and like those kinds of sites where you go on and you flip, you know, left or right. If you see, you know, uh, somebody of, you know, that you're interested in, a man or woman that you're interested in, you could say, yeah, you know, yes or no, you flip it either way. Well, that's what the app is going to do for, for deals. So if you're a lender, you're going to go in and basically, instead of seeing a person, you're going to see the deal and you're going to flip yes or no, whether you're interested in it. And then if it lines up with, um, with that borrower and the amount of money that you have available, then you guys will connect automatically. It'll tell you, and then everything will be built in. Here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, exactly what's going to happen. So again, that'll get launched in October. We're working on it every single week right now. Andrew uh, Chestnut's on here and he is kind of heading that up for our team right now and the intermediary, so to say, between um, Chris and myself and our team and the web developers. Uh, so that's going to be a whole lot of, um, that's going to be really, really cool when that comes out in October. 
So just to understand that's what beta is. So right now, if you're not a member, this is where you would come. Just are you looking to generate passive income through lending? Are you an investor looking for funding? Are you kind of just learning more about them and you're not really sure if you're going to be a borrower or a lender? So you can go on here and pick what you are. Um, it'll walk you through, you know, how to get started, how to set up your profile, all that good stuff. All right. So once we're logged into the private money club and this, there we go. So this is where we can actually see things that are happening. So the front page right here, just plain and simple, you know, if you have a deal um, and you're looking for funds, you click here. So this is for any of the borrowers that were in the chat box. And then from here, you just follow the template. So it's real easy. What's the title? Do something that's exciting. That's going to catch somebody's eye. So, you know, earn 15% returns first position experienced investor um you know six month return florida property something like that right so if i see that as the title oh shoot and i'm a lender i'm like, okay 15 percent. that interests me that's a good return first position good 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 um and and while i go through this i'll just kind of talk a little bit about these terms. So 15% means it's an annual return. So 15% is over the course of a year. So most of these deals are going to be paid monthly or quarterly. So that's part of the terms, right? So we're going to look at when it comes to the terms of the deal, what's the interest rate? What's the length that you're lending the money for? Um, what position are you in? Um, you know, what's the, what's the property? How much are you looking at? How much are you looking to borrow? So those are all the terms. Um, and then, you know, how that money's going to get paid back. So the majority of private lending deals that are on this platform are going to be an annual interest rate, but it's going to be paid monthly. So let's just use 12% because it's more simple math. So if this was a 12% annual deal paid monthly, and I lent $100,000 to this person, what that means is over the next year, I'm going to earn 12% on my $100,000. And if you do the math on that, that's $1,000 a month. There's, that's a, uh, it's $12,000 for the year, 12% of hundred grand is $12,000. Divide that by 12 months, that's $1,000 a month. So I know if I lend my money on this deal, I'm going to start receiving $1,000 a month coming back into my bank account. And most of these most of these deals are going to get a check in the mail. So each month, I know that I'm going to have a check in my mailbox for $1,000. And then at the end of the deal, so if it takes six months, if it takes eight months, if it takes 12 months, if it takes three months, at the end of it, whatever that is, I'm going to get my $100,000 back. But in the meantime, I'm going to get $1,000 a month coming in. Okay. And if it's paid back in six months, then I earn $6,000 and the deal's done. So I'm not getting 12. Now, some things that you can do differently on that deal, what you can do. So let's say, let's say this investor only needs the money for three months. Okay. So a three month deal. And I, as a lender, I'm like, all right, you know, three months is cool, but I know that once I get my money back, now my money's going to be sitting because I'm gonna have to find the next deal. So even if it only sits for two weeks, it's still two weeks of interest. My $100,000 is now not earning me. On top of that, um, you know, I gotta go through the paperwork. I had to underwrite this deal to make sure that it made sense to me. So I have some time in it. So I don't know if it's really worth $3,000 for me to lend $100,000 if I'm only gonna make three grand because I only lent the money for three months, even if it's a great deal. So I might say to myself, I just don't know if that's worth it. But that doesn't have to be the end of it, because when it comes to all of the deals on the private money club, these are all private deals, meaning they're negotiable. So every single borrower that I've spoken to has told me that the terms are negotiable. Every lender that I've spoken to says, yeah, we're willing to lend different amounts for different lengths, for different returns. It just depends on the deal. So everything's negotiable. So what I would say, if I knew this was three months, I'd say, listen, I'm willing to lend you $100,000 at 12% for three months, but I want two points on that deal. So what are points? So points are simply when you say, it's going to get paid either upfront or it can be paid on the back end when you get your principal back. Either way, it can be set up. But basically, a point is one percentage point of the total amount that's lent out. 
So if you lend out $100,000, one point is $1,000. And you're going to get that $1,000, whether you lend the money for a month or for five years. That point is not dependent on the, ter on the length of term that the money's used. The 12% annual is based on that length of term, but the points are not. The points are just flat out one point off whatever the total lending amount is. So if I lend $100,000 at two points and 12% returns over three months, I just got a percentage point a month because of the 12% divided by 12 months. So a percent a month, which is $3,000 and two points, which are $2,000, 100,000, two points, two percentage of the 100,000 is $2,000. So I just lend my money out. And in three months, I just made a $5,000 return on my money. And now that makes it a little more sense to me. And I guarantee you the borrower is going to look at that and they're going to say, okay, well, I'm still going to make $30,000 on this deal in three months. So I'm willing on the back end to pay an extra $2,000 out to this investor because I need the money. They're able to close quickly. They can give me the money right now today and we can get this deal done very quickly. So for a borrower, that can make a lot of sense to do because are they, are they happy to pay out an extra $2,000 to make 30 grand or lose out on the deal because they can't close on the deal because they don't have the money to close on it. Well, I know I'd rather pay out the extra $2,000 and get the deal done than lose out on it completely. So these are all things that you guys can talk about when you're um, negotiating these deals. Um, and then here, you're going to just what the status is. So obviously it's an active listing. Now, if you go in and you edit the listing, once it's sold, you'll just change that to completed listing. So it updates in the system. Any pictures you have, you can just drop, drag and drop them right on here, or you can select files. Um, do realize Please, if you are using high resolution photos, like professional photos, or even our iPhones, these days take super high resolution. When you put them on your computer, just make sure that you kind of source them down a little bit because this is going to be maximum file size is 20 megabits or megabytes or whatever the hell that is. So um, anything bigger than that, you know, won't go on to here. So just keep that in. You might have to make them smaller, whatever the technical term, Andrew, you can tell me what the technical term is for that. Um, and then you can caption the images. Um, you know, hey, this is the kitchen, this is the outdoors, uh, this is the, you know, bathroom, um, you know, whatever it is, it's good to have captions. People love pictures. I mean, uh, you know, whether you're a visual person or not, you know, when I look at a deal, the more pictures, the better. Um, so start with 10 pictures and then have others available as part of your overall package, like your perfect loan proposal. Have as many pictures available as possible in there or have a link on here that links to a Google Drive that has like 100 pictures. The more pictures, the better. That's all I'm gonna say. And if you can do some videos, videos are really good too. And then you can in there, you can just put a link to the Google Drive where all the videos and pictures and everything are located. And then all I have to do is click on the link and it pulls it all up for me. Uh, so that's another way to do that as well. Um, and then, you know, what are you, how much money are you looking to borrow? So the asking price is really the borrow amount. So if I'm looking for a hundred thousand dollars, you know, I need a hundred thousand dollars and then put the details. Um, it could be as detailed or not at this point as you want, but put enough description in here that it makes me want to reach out to you as a lender to get more information. Okay. So you don't have to put everything in here. Um, but put enough where it entices me to reach out to want to talk with you. Put the property address so I have an idea of where it is, what kind of property it is. Uh, double just means a duplex, triplex, quads, um, any kind of commercial real estate, which is five plus units. So apartment complexes, things like that. If it's vacant land, um, we should have an other on here. If you're taking notes, Andrew, but there should be like an other on here in case it's a, a mobile home park or um, uh, whatever the case might be, a condo. Uh, you know, there's a lot of condos there, Airbnbs these days, and that should be changed to duplex. All right. Um, you know, put the information about the property, bedrooms, bathrooms, when it was built. You know, again, you can put as much or as little information on some of this as you want. Any supporting documents. So if you have any kind of appraisals or um, any kind of CMAs or comps, um, so a comp, just so you guys know, you're going to hear that a lot when you're lending or when you're borrowing. So do you have comps? Do you have a CMA? So CMA stands for comparable market analysis, comparable market analysis. Um, you might hear BPO in the commercial world, which is broker price opinion. And all these are, are uh, comparing comparable properties 
to the subject property, which is yours. Um, so if I have a home um, that I'm looking to purchase here in, in, let's just say in Jupiter, Florida, and it's in a, you know, a gated community, well, I'm going to look at gated communities within that area that have the same style homes, the same size homes, the overall comparable type of homes. And then I'm going to look at what is currently listed in the market, what has recently sold over the last three to six months, and how does that compare to the property that I have? And that gives me a good idea of where the market is, um, how much I can expect to sell that house for. And then we're going to look at the comps of what the property is worth now. And then we look at what's called the ARV, which is the after repair value or the after rehab value, ARV. And that's what the home would be worth. That's what the uh, property would comp out at after all the rehab is done to it. So it's, if it's a flip, you're going to have the purchase price of the property. You're going to have how much rehab work is expected to be put into that property, how long you're going to be expected to have that pro to own that property before it sells. So from when you close on that thing to when you get all the work done to when you market it and sell it, that's your overall holding time frame. So that goes into the holding costs. Uh, you don't want to forget that because if you're paying insurance, utilities, I'm paying a private money lender, you know, a percentage point a month. You know, all of that st stuff goes into the holding costs of, of having that property under contract and, and, um, and doing the rehab on it. So this is all stuff you need to know. What the property is selling for now, what the rehab costs are going to be, the holding costs, so how long you're going to have it. And then what's that property expected to sell for ARV, after re rehab value. And then that's what all goes into kind of evaluating a property when you're looking at lending on it or not. Or if you're a borrower and you're looking to do a deal, you know, that's all the stuff you look at to know whether it's a good deal or not. Or what is the exit strategy? I shouldn't assume you're flipping it. Maybe you're renting it. Maybe you're doing an Airbnb. Maybe you're doing the Burr method where you're going to refinance it. But whatever the case is, all that stuff is very important to know. So on here, you can put as much or as little as you want um, in those documents, you know, add any of those supporting documents that you have so I can quickly see it. Or if you don't have them available right now, just make sure you put in the description something like, um, you know, CMA or appraisal available upon request, right? Something like that. So I know you have it. Um, and then if I want to know more about it, I can ask you for it. Um, and then this is just some, some of those financials I was just talking about. So uh, what's the estimated repair value, you know, all that, what's your phone number, what's your email? So how do we contact you? Um, boom, boom, save and preview. And, and that's it for posting a deal. So very easy right there. Now, if you're investing, uh, we'll come back to that one. Now, if you're learning the ropes, you're kind of new to this, click here, brings you some of the videos. So check these out. These are kind of basic videos we made uh, last year just to kind of get things kicked off. So what is private money? A little bit about private money lending. What's the perfect pro loan proposal and how to start reading that thing, protecting your money, analyzing and structuring deals and terms. So going into a little bit more in depth on what I was just talking about, going into a little bit more in depth on what I'm going to talk about here in just a minute, and then kind of how to get your first deal done. So, uh, you know, go and watch these videos if you haven't already. These are just expanding a little bit more on what we're talking about here today. Um, all right. So here's a question. I told you guys, I want to answer questions as they come in today. So Kevin's saying, I need to buy a used car to Uber secured by my home equity. My credit score has dropped to where I can't get a HELOC. I'm willing to pay 14% on a short-term loan of 15,000. I have steady veterans income of 64,000. And I was going to talk to Kevin S at the July event. Um, I have contact info but maybe someone on here would like to do it. I can afford a thousand a month payback on note. If I rent my room, I'll have another 800. I will not default on my vehicle because that's my business. I will pay for appraisal. Um, yeah, so right now the private money club is, you know, we're, we're making it strictly available or, or kind of strictly detailed towards uh, real estate, but there's a lot of private lending opportunities out there outside of real estate as well. It's just for the private money club right now, at least we want to really concentrate on it only being real estate. So real estate backed investments. Um, so Kevin, that's a great idea. You know, and you're using your home to secure the loan as opposed to even using the vehicle 
um, which is even better because there are websites you can go on and, and we might take the private money. Well, I, I shouldn't say we might. We will eventually have a section of the private money club, club for non-real estate things like financing vehicles, uh, like financing businesses, like financing startups, like, you know, all kinds of different cool stuff. But right now it's strictly um, real estate. Now, with that being said, Kevin, you absolutely can do what you're talking about. Um, it would be a second lean position. So I'm thinking 14, 15% would probably be the going rate, I feel like for a private lean, second lean position, because I'm, I'm sure you have a mortgage on there, Kevin, right? So, so let's talk about positions for just a second. Whenever you go get a mortgage at a bank, for instance, the mortgage company, the bank is going to put what's called a first position lien against that property. And what first position means is if you default on that contract, on that mortgage, if you default and don't make your monthly mortgage payments, for instance, that bank or finance company has the right as first lien position to foreclose on that home and take it back, take it over, right? A second lien position means you are at the mercy of the first lien. So what that means is the first lien position, if they auction the house off or if they take, take it back, um, they're going to get their money back first. And then whatever's left over, if there's any money left over, goes to the other liens that are on that property, whether they're second position, third position, whatever the case might be. Now, there's a lot of times when doing private money lending makes sense to do it in second lien position, you just have to look at what is the first lien position, how much equity is in that deal where if something goes wrong, are you still going to be covered in the second position? And what does that look like? And because there's typically a little bit more risk involved, usually the interest that is willing to be paid by the borrower and um, the interest that I'm willing to earn as the lender is usually higher because it's a little bit more risk, because you're at the mercy of that first lien position holder. So a lot of times you'll see a deal, hey, we're willing to pay 10% for first lien position money. Um, let's say we need $800,000, but we need another $200,000 in rehab that we're going to do in a second position. So $800,000 at 10%, or you can lend $200,000 in second position at 15%. So you're getting a little bit higher amount. And a lot of times it's a little bit smaller amount as well, because the first lien is going to be the bulk of the investment. The second lien is going to be a lot of times like rehab costs or closing costs or holding costs, things like that. Like next week, I should have a new Rob Fuller deal. And Rob does have a deal right now where part of it is second position, but he's willing to pay like 16% on this money. And because of the way the first position is set up through the hard money lenders, it's a really, really good second lien position deal, in my opinion. Um, it's something that I'm personally looking at. So I'm excited to bring that to you guys next week. So make sure you hop on for that one. So back to this. So what Kevin can do is, Kevin, if you're looking to do... Um, you know, to make this work, then what I would do is if you're in the private money club, um, just go on there and message some of the lenders say, Hey, Hey, I have a unique situation for you right now. Uh, you know, I've, I attend all of the money multiplier trainings. I'm going to the live in-person money school event in July to meet everybody in person, but here's what I'm looking to accomplish right now. I'm willing to use my home as collateral for this loan so I can purchase a vehicle so I can start doing Uber and say, Hey, I'm willing to lend 16% or 14%. I only need $15,000. It'll be paid back in 15 months. I could pay you a thousand a month. You know, are you interested? And I, I bet you that if you go on there and you start messaging some of the lenders on Private Money Club and explain your situation and who you are and build that relationship, I bet you you'll find somebody that will be willing to do that for you. So make sure you guys watch those videos if you haven't already. Now, if you're a lender, you're going to click right here. And this is going to pull up some current deals that are available. Now, this is where I want to caveat that not all deals are currently making it on the private money club. Some deals are getting funded before they even make it on here. So we have some Chris Rude deals that are going very, very quickly. Um, 
Uh, Rob Fuller deals have been, have gone very quickly. He just has some new ones that are coming online right now. Uh, we had a guy on two weeks ago. Um, his name is Kip. And he had some really uh, uh, good opportunities going into Florida for a, a land deal that they had. And that's not on here. They never had a chance to make it on here. Um, I don't think Jack Petrick is putting deals on here yet right now. So there's, there's several deals that are available for lenders that aren't quite on the private money club yet right now. So with that being said, if you're new to lending, there's multiple things that you can do when you first join the private money club. So first off, like I was showing you guys, go on there and make sure that your profile is set up properly. Uh, I've set mine up 10 times and it still says this. So I don't know, but that's where I refer back to the same beta. Um, this is the beta version. So we still have some little bugs in it, but when we release in October, all this will be fixed. So when you first go on, you know, add your profile picture, just put a little bit about who you are, what you're looking to lend, um, you know, put your information. So that way people can connect with you. So make sure your profile set up properly. And then from here, this is where you can see a lot of stuff. So like, you have any notifications, you know, if anybody's messaged you, if you have friend requests, things like that. Um, obviously I have some friend requests I need to respond to. Uh, any messages coming in? Um, all your friends. So you can go on there and you can chat with people. So who are they looking to borrow, looking to borrow? What's their information? Um, you know, I could say, oh, Michael David, I've heard that name before. So I go on in there. You know, so let's see, Michael flipped renovated um, 70 properties in Baltimore, Maryland over the last six years. Uh, currently has 15 to 20 rental properties, mainly interested in private lending and investing, lending out my funds for return, short-term, possibly long-term. So, so, you know, it gives me a little idea of who Michael is. So that's perfect right there. It doesn't have to be long or in depth or anything like that. Just something plain and simple. So just go on there and make sure you kind of fill that stuff out. And, and again, that's how you're going to start finding different people. And then I'll, I'll go into, I'll show you how to start messaging multiple people at once. So then what we can do is we can go over to messages and you're going to see this right here, create new message. So if you click that, all right. So what we're going to do here is if you know who you're going to message, you could type it in. So, so if I start typing in someone's name, if I know I want to message Andrew Test up, for instance, start typing it in Andrew, and it'll send Andrew a direct message. Or again, I could go over to my friends and I could click Andrew's name and I could send him a message that way. But real, it's plain. It's, it's pretty easy right here just to do it. Put in the subject, put in what your message is, hit send, and now you guys are going to start that conversation. So just you know, want to lend to you, or have a deal you might be interested in. Hey, Andrew, I'm an, I'm a new investor to PMC. I have an incredible deal right now with great terms, need under K. Would you like to learn more about it and have conversation, right? So then if I'm Andrew, I see this and I'm like, all right, you know, a new, a new deal is available. They need a hundred thousand. Well, I have a hundred thousand. I'm looking to lend in the next couple of weeks. That's coming back to me from another deal. So yeah, let me, uh, let me respond back. And then I respond back and we start the conversation. Um, so that's all it is right there. Or, you know, I send this to Andrew and then Andrew reads it and he says, oh, you know what? I actually, I just lent my money out on another deal. So I don't have the money right now. All right, so I send this to Andrew, all right? And then I go about my day and we'll see what Andrew responds, you know? And if, if he doesn't have the money right now, or, or you know, he says, oh, I just lent out my money, I'll have it next year. No problem. You just put your put, put Andrew on your list. Hey, Andrew's a lender. He lends in the $100,000 range. He just won't have any money available for six months. And now, you know, look, it pops right up. Look at that. Dude, I love your deals. I'm in. So, <laughs> so it makes it very easy. And then I can just give him a little thumbs up. Cool. Call me. Let's chat. No, five, six, one. And then he can call me. We can talk about it. Or I can say, send me the perfect loan proposal, right? Or whatever the case is. All right, so that's plain and simple. Now, back to messages. So I go create new message. Let's say I want to message all the lenders because I got a deal that I'm super excited about. 
I post it on first thing, go on there and post it, obviously into the deals and then go on here and say, send mass message. So if I had a deal, this is what I would do. First off, I would post the deal. So again, we go over there, post deal. Post my deal for funding, just like we walked through a minute ago. Once the deal is posted, what I would do is I would email um, me. You guys know me, I'm Steven. So you, I would email me and I would say, hey, Steven, I, will, I just posted a new deal on the Private Money Club and I would love to promote it. You can even go right here, promote your deal. And then um, I would email me, tell me about your deal. Tell me you just posted it and say, hey, I want to get on Private Money Club as soon as possible. I'll reply to you and say, okay, how is June 27th? How is July 11th? I'll, you know, we'll find a date that works and we will make a deal. Now, if it's a time sensitive deal, what I will do, what we can do is we can record a quick 20 to 30 minute, 10 minute, whatever video outside of Money Club Mondays. So we'll just, we'll schedule a time in the afternoon, in the morning, in the evening to do a little 20 minute Zoom. I'll record it, just you and me. We won't have a live audience to answer questions and things like that, but we'll record the video and I will ask you all the questions um, that I, you know, that somebody else might ask, or I'll look at it from the approach of, I want to lend on that deal. I'm going to ask you all the questions that need to be known to, to decide whether I want to lend on that deal or not. So we'll record a webinar and then we can use that. We can blast that out on the YouTube channel. I can post that on money club Monday or on um, private money club. We can email it out to everybody. And that way it gets it in front of more eyes. Cause the more eyes you can get on your deal, the more lenders are going to see it. And the more, um, uh, opportunities you'll have to get that deal funded. So A, post it on Private Money Club. B, email me to let me know you want to get on private on, um, on Money Club Mondays. And then I would go to this mass, me mass message. Again, I'll just show you guys how to do it one more time because it's a little odd right now, but right there, messages, create message, send mass message. Now this is a little odd, so, so watch closely. All right, so what we do is we scroll down, but you don't want to scroll down this section. This is like old messages. For some reason, it saves them all, which I don't understand, but nonetheless. So just ignore all that, but then you'll get to here. So check this box to continue and then select which group to message. Okay, so first step on a group message is click that box. And then do you want to message borrowers or lenders? So if I have a deal, I want to email or I want to message lenders. If I have money available and I'm looking for a deal, then I want to message borrowers. So let's just pretend I have a deal. I'm looking for money. So I click lenders and then um, disallow reply to this message. Well, you want people to be able to reply. So do not check that. You want people to reply. And Eva saying the recorded promo with me asking great questions would be awesome. Yeah, Eva, I'll do that. Definitely. Any borrowers, let me know, guys, and we'll record these videos. All right. So I want to be able to reply to this message. So unclick that. Hide this thread from your thread list. If you are messaging too many users, better to hide new threads from your thread list. Um, I don't even know what that means. So I'm going to uncheck that one. And then if you want, if you want to do like a group message where people can respond all together, then you want to do one thread, but you don't want to do that because you want these to be personalized conversations. So just unclick all of those would be the best way to do that. And then subject. Again, what are the terms, right? So let's say 60% loan to value, something like that, right? Um, so loan to value, again, if you're borrowing, if you need a hundred, let's say the deal's worth a hundred thousand dollars, you're only needing 60,000 to do the deal though. That'd be 60% loan to the hundred, $60,000 loan to the hundred thousand dollar value, which is the LTV loan to value, which in this deal would be 60% or whatever it is, whatever the deal is, the subject. And then just say, Hey, just posted a deal, blah, 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 blah. And then start messaging. And then that will be sent out to all of the lenders in the private money club. They'll see it. They can reply back. They'll know about it. They'll know to go look for it um, in the deal section. So those, those are the three steps that you're going to want to take when you first post a deal. And then from there, just go in and start, look, you know, friending people and then, you know, re and then reaching out to them individually. Um, let's see. Let's see. 
looking to invest. Okay. New to lending field. I'm excited to learn, practice IBC, build wealth, and meeting great people. So I'd say, okay, Fumi looks like a nice person. And so I'd say, uh, right here, messaging option. Sorry. So I want to send, I want to send Fumi a private message. So I just click on that. And just something like, uh, and then again, this is if I was a borrower looking for money, I'd say, hey, Fumi, love that you are learning about private lending. I have been borrowing and investing in real estate for over 10 years, have done over 50 deals, would love to chat with you and help you learn the ropes while you earn interest on your money, something like that. And then if I'm Fumi and I'm new to lending and I see this, hey, this guy's got a bunch of experience. Um, you know, he's willing to help me learn while I, you know, kind of get the ropes of everything and I'm gonna start making money while I learn. Um, and he's gonna kind of guide me through and, 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 and take my hand through the process. You know, as somebody that's new to this, they're gonna read that and be like, oh, I love it. And then with Fumi, you know, maybe I say, hey, Fumi, since you're new and I'm gonna have to spend some time teaching you about contracts and teaching you, you know, making sure that you know what you're doing and, and you're comfortable with everything. We might have to spend more time on the phones. Well, normally I would pay 12%, but how about 10% since you're learning, uh, but you're still making money at the same time. How does 10% sound to you? And Fumi might say, oh, that's awesome. You know, I just wanna learn the process more than anything. So I'm, I'm willing to take a little bit less money um, for you to help me learn stuff. And, and, and we have investors that do that all the time um, that take new people and kind of and teach them the ropes. You know, because if you're investing from like self-directed IRA, it's very easy. But if you're working with a borrower that's, that's used to borrowing money from self-directed IRAs, it just makes it a lot seamless. It makes it very simple and easy. Um, so those are things that I would do from the borrower side. And then if you're a lender, again, just start going to the deals. So right here, find a deal. So let's look at a couple of these deals. All right. So if I'm a lender, I'm going to go right here. You know, this is the deal section. So this is the latest deal that was posted. So first off, whoever posted this should have put some pictures. Like I said earlier, pictures are very valuable. I want to see pictures. Even if it's a, even if it's a lot, go on Google earth or on maps pull up the property and take a screenshot of where the area is or what the lot is. Like, I just want to see pictures. But nonetheless, this is a sister lot land flip in Dundalin, Florida. So two lots side by side that have manufactured homes on them, clearing the lots that are each two and a half acres together, total five acres, having some trees removed, cleaning debris, people use land as dumping ground, then relisting on market. Homes are movement ready, have buyers lined up with local realtors. So this looks like a quick little short-term loan. They're going to clear the property and sell the properties. So double, that looks like they're probably double wides, double wide trailers. Um, so the first thing I would do is who is this? Okay. So Mark Anthony Thompson. So the first thing I would do in this deal is, okay, the deal looks interesting to me. I definitely want to know more about it. The total investment's only 120000 So I know that fits within the amount of money that I want to lend on. So that all looks good. So let me take it to the next step. So first, I always start personally with the lender. So I start with the basics of the deal. But before I dig into the, excuse me, before I dig into the specifics of the deal, I want to learn who is the lender, Okay. Because to me, that's more important almost than who the, than what the deal is specifically. So who is Mark Anthony Thompson? So the first thing I'm gonna do is click his profile. So I wish he had a picture here. So Mark, if you're on right now, please add a picture on here. So first off, you wanna have a picture there because again, this is a personal relationship that we're building. So who am I working with? Who am I dealing with? What do you look like? Not that it matters, but it's nice to see a face with a name, right? So I like, the, I like the profile so far. So he's from Phoenix, Arizona, started flipping mobile homes back in 2014. So right off the bat, he's been in the business for eight years and he's not only in the business, but he's been flipping mobile homes. Well, what was the deal? Mobile homes. 
So that's good. He's got eight years of doing what this deal is. I like that. All right. So which led me to starting my own mobile home transportation and installation company and becoming a licensed dealer in the state of Arizona. We then began to develop land using mobile homes by the hundreds. We even got into developing building very small scale subdivision neighborhoods without 501c3 using affordable housing grants. Okay. So again, experience, experience, experience. He's got a lot of experience in this type of real estate. I get a lot of great land deals from tax liens or deed or auctions. So that's a great way to obtain property. So I love how he's getting properties and using a repo double wides and HUD FHA approved foundation and installs for refinancing and mortgages. So awesome strategy. Now, I personally know quite a bit about this, but if I didn't, what I would do is I'd be writing this down right now. I'd be writing down. I just got this cool gold pen this weekend. So check this out. I'd be writing down. Okay. When I talk to Mark, so I'm just writing Mark down. When I talk to Mark, um, tell me more. It's one of my favorite uh, things. Tell me more, uh, which happens to be TMM, which is, uh, you know, the money multiplier. So, so tell me more about, uh, you know, when you repo double wides, like, how does that work? Like, what is that about? Like, just tell me more about it. Like, what kind of condition do they come in? And let them tell you a little bit about it. Or, hey, you know, um, without 501c3. Uh, so what is 501c3? So I'm going to write that down. You know, if it's important for him to put it on here, but you don't know what it is, ask him about it. What is 501c3 mean? What does that mean? Let him tell you about it. How do you use ho housing grants? Why aren't you using housing grants for this deal? Why are you looking for private money, right? So these are all questions that we're going to get when we talk to Mark that we're getting strictly from his profile right now. So he gets tons of amazing leads on cheap trailers and leads on land from his students and way more than he can fund himself when it comes to moving them to land and developing the land. So I'm looking for funding to capitalize on all these extra leads students bring me that are beyond my bandwidth funding wise. All right. So what does this tell me? This tells me he has more deals than he has money. So that's why he needs private money. I started out with that. You guys were listening at the beginning. I said, there's an evolution that every investor gets to. It's where they no longer can get money the traditional ways. In this case, 501c3, grants, traditional banks, and they have to go to private money. So that's where Mark is right now. And what this tells me is not only is this a good problem for him to have, but it's a great solution for me to provide. And not only is it a great solution for me to provide with private lending on this deal, right? This specific deal. But what does this tell me that Mark will have coming up in the future? A lot more deals. So this guy right here, and especially being the fact that we're talking about land and we're talking about trailers and mobile homes, this is a two properties with two trailers and he only needs $120,000. So if I'm somebody that's playing in that financial space where I'm lending out $20,000, Fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I'm not ready to play with the big boys in the half a million, million, two million dollar range. Some of those other deals, because as I go through here, there will be deals on here where you got to have a minimum half a million dollars, or you know, they don't want to talk with you unless you have two hundred fifty thousand, something like that. So I'm already. This is stuff just by reading his profile. This is all stuff that I'm getting right now. Hey, this is somebody with me only lending out fifty, sixty thousand dollars at a time. This is somebody that I want to be friends with. This is somebody that I want to build a relationship with, because even if I don't have one hundred and twenty thousand for this deal, again, what is this telling me? That he's going to have a lot more deals coming in on a regular basis. Let me message Mark. The perfect investor for who I want to lend to. Good. Love to chat with you and learn more. So that's, that's all it has to be right there. He can respond back. You guys can hop on the phone or chat back and forth this way, whatever works for you and build that relationship. You know, you know, maybe he replies back. Great. Let's talk. Awesome. I don't have the money for this deal, but I do have 50 K available in two weeks. Do you have any deals fitting that 
lending amount coming up soon. And he could reply back, awesome, I have one in my pipeline right now I've been looking at. I'm gonna need $40,000 to get it done. It'll be ready next month. Boom, now you just found your first deal to lend on to somebody that's got a bunch of experience and, um, and is working in a world that works for you. So this, that is all just from reading this simple profile. So do you see why I say it's important when you first join the private money club to set up your profile properly? Again, if there was a picture here, that'd be even better. And then once I learn about Mark and realize that's somebody I want to lend to, then I'm going to get more specific with the deal itself. So then I'm going to look up the area. I might do some Googling on what is around Dunalyn, Florida. Is it an up and coming market? Is it, you know, what's happening around the area? Maybe Mark knows that info. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe I need to look it up myself. Um, you know, what kind of shape are these in? What kind of work are they going to do? That's all stuff that he can send over to you in the perfect loan proposal or, um, or he can send over to you. What are the comps? You know, he says he's working with, uh, he has buyers lined up with a local realtor. Okay, well, have that realtor send you the comps. Um, you know, how long do you plan on holding these properties? What's the exit strategy? I mean, he tells you right there, but these are all things you can ask about. So we're going to under, underwrite the borrower, meaning we're just going to learn about the borrower. And then we're going to underwrite the deal, meaning we're just going to learn about the deal, the specifics of the deal. And then if this all makes sense, then I say, okay, Mark, I'm going to lend you the $120,000. And then that's when you'll do the promissory note. You'll do the contract. Um, the paperwork will be done. You'll wire the funds. And... Uh, everything will get done nice and simply. All right. So big spread, fix and flip in St. Pete. All right. So St. Petersburg is uh, part of Tampa, Florida. So one of the hottest markets in the country here lately, it seems like. So it looks like a nice uh, all-American home, which is in big, big demand these days. Um people have been competing with these hedge funds in that under half a million dollar range. And it's been a tough market. So anytime you see one of these nice three, two, twos, a block home in Florida is great because of hurricanes um, with a pool is even better. So you can see first, so they're looking for two opportunities on this one. Um, and then they've attached a PDF outlining the project. So you can see it's plain and simple. They just said what the property is, where it's located, what the lending opportunities are. And if you want more information, check out the PDF. So I love that too. That's a great way to do it. Um, his title is really good, big spread. Um, you know, I see that, I'm like, hell yeah, that's a safe deal. And again, what the spread is, that's that loan to value. How much money you're lending versus what the property's worth. Um, and it's a fix and flip. So that's telling me he's gonna buy this thing. He's gonna rehab it very quickly and he's gonna sell it. So you're gonna get your money back very fast. And he's willing to do 15% return for 12 months, um, either for the full rehab and purchase or just for the second lien position. Uh, I assume these are probably going to be holding costs for him. All right, just learn a little bit about the property 2000 square feet, 1968. So, property lead. Um, so, this is going to tell you this comes right out of the perfect loan proposal. and. Um, actually, this came right from the property spec sheet, which is part of the perfect loan proposal. But if you just want these documents, these are also available. I'll show you in just a second where to get them. All right. So uh, again, plain and simple. It tells you about the property, a little bit about you know the the, the specifics of it. So purchase price of five hundred five, rehab value of eighty thousand, uh, the after rehab value of seven hundred and eighty five thousand. So they're going to have 585 in the property. They're selling it for 785. So when you take out closing costs and selling costs and all that, there's still a nice spread in there. So this gives you a little bit more information. It's a single family, two car, two car attached garage, good condition, electrical heating. Uh, the roof was in 2015, which is good. Windows are mostly new. It's a good neighborhood. It's a big rehab. So $80,000 in rehab is a good size rehab. And all that means is there's a lot of work that needs to be done, which could equal big, more work could equal more risk because you could find problems once you start digging into it. It could take longer than expected. Um, so anytime it's a big rehab, it's more risk, which is probably one of the reasons why you see him willing as a newer borrower to pay 15%. So he's compensating because if this was a Chris Rude deal, you might get 10 or 12%. It'll be, it'd be a quick, like, 
wholetail that Chris Rude does. This is a little bit more rehab. So he's willing to pay a little bit more for the money for the little bit more risk. Um, so you can see right here, comps, he actually attached a CMA to it. So this is the scope of work. So water, um, so, so remember I was talking about the holding costs, the carrying costs. So he has those broken down. It's about $400 a month for water utilities and insurance and lawn maintenance. Uh, the only thing he doesn't have in, in holding costs calculated here, which he probably should, would be the cost of the money. So if he's borrowing 600 grand at 15%, um, I mean, what is that? 585 times 0.15. I mean, that's $87,000 divided by 12. So that's $7,300 a month in, 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 in interest being paid out. Oh, here we go. He has it on here. So they're expecting... Um, Loan payments, I'm not sure if that adds up. So this is stuff that I would ask him about. When it, so when I when I talk to Nicholas, I'm gonna say, hey, Nick, um, you know, I see your total breakdown, the deal rundown, summary of everything. Uh, uh, how do we add up, you know, because six months at 15% doesn't quite up, add up to this. So I would ask him, you know, let, let's double check these numbers and make sure. But nonetheless, he has, you know, after everything, you're right around that $130,000 profit mark, which is great. So this is what they plan on doing, plans and permitting, demolition. So you have all the costs right here. So they clearly know what they're doing. They've taken everything into account. Here's those pictures I was telling you about. So pure shit house, which is a beautiful thing as an investor. So that it looks like they're doing all new bathrooms, kitchen, get the pool fixed, which isn't too hard. All right. So if you were to, oh, I see what they're doing here. So this was only lending out the 80,000 at 15% is what they were, what they were um, adding up for those costs. So if you were to finance the whole thing at 18, at 15,000, 15%, then those holding costs would just be up a little bit for him, but no big deal. Uh, four to six month time span. So this way, you know, you're going to get your money back in about four to six months. All right. So that's everything. He did say that the uh, the comps were attached. I'll show you guys those. It looks like he posted them on here. So right here, CMA. So what this is showing is, what is the product? So this is 2564 62nd Avenue. So you can see right here, this is the subject property. And then you it's uh, 1,957 square feet. So then we look at the ones around the area. So the, the subject property, usually the subject property would be on the CMA. It's probably right around right here because you see 62nd Avenue, which is where this is. So the subject property is probably right around here. So they just picked three properties right in the area. Um, you can see they're all three bedroom, two bath, all right around 1950 square feet, just like the other one. So we have the subject property details and then the comps. So it's sold, 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 sold in two days. So DOM is days on market. So these comparables sold in two days, five days, and three days for an average of three days. So he's expecting as soon as this thing's done to hit the market, and it'll sell very quickly, which is good because that lowers all those closing costs and everything that we were talking about. Different graphs, what it lists, what was listed for, what it sold for. So you can see stuff still selling over list, which means it's a hot market, which means it's good to get this thing done and sold very quickly. It's in a hot area more than anything. Stuff that goes on the market in that area is being sold very fast. Boom, boom, boom. That's what you want. All right. Just tells you a little bit about the subject or the uh, comparable properties. So this one's very similar. It's a couple hundred square feet bigger, but you can see the pool and everything. Three bedroom, two bath. 74. The other one was built in 69. So very similar. Tell a little bit about it. So much love about this well-maintained. So well-maintained tells me it's probably not completely redone. And I could read through, through through that and find out a little bit more, but it was listed for 750 and sold for 285,000 in two days, in three days. So that's a, that's a good thing. Shows it's a hot market and they'll be right on asking what they're asking for that above property. And so that's what a CMA looks like. And you can have realtors do these for you. You can run them yourself with software. Um, the new private money club will have it built in where you can run it um, automatically through the private money club. But all right. So that's a little bit more information. So I liked how he included those documents in here so you can learn more. And then if all that looks good, then again, I just give uh, Nick a call, 
send them a message or uh, say, I am interested. When I click that right there, it's going to allow me to start that conversation with Nick. Hey, Nick, checking out your deal. Let's talk. Hit send and boom, Nick knows that I, I want to talk and he's got a uh, possible lender on the hook. All right, guys, we're, um, we're past the hour mark. So I think that uh, we got through a lot of good stuff today. Did that help anybody? You guys, any questions I can clarify or answer before we hop off here? Was that helpful for you? Like I said, next week, um, I should have a new opportunity uh, or two available that I'll be going through, one with Rob Fuller, and I'll try and find one more. So we have some different deals to go through. But let me know if you guys have any questions, need any help with this stuff. Uh, like I said, if I if we don't have any deals one week, I'll just keep doing training like this and kind of going through stuff. But there is lots of resources in here also. So make sure you log into Private Money Club. You know, we have the video training library. The File Vault is where I said that that um, spec sheet was available. There's uh, Eve was asking about templates earlier. So there's sample notes and documents right here. Um, if you, uh, and the affiliate programs too. So if you ever share this with anybody else, uh, join our affiliate program and we'll actually pay you uh, money for sending people over to join private money club. So check that out. But, uh, and there's some bonus content in here as well. So these are all in our resources. So if you're already a member and you're in the private money club, make sure you're taking full advantage of everything that we have to offer. And then of course, um, MSTV, we do the monthly coaching call. So uh, Money School TV is included with uh, your private club, Money Club membership. There's a lot of really good on-demand videos in there and uh, we do the monthly coaching call also. So make sure you're taking full advantage of MSTV also. If you're not yet, if you haven't yet bought your tickets for it, make sure you buy your tickets. It's coming up in 39 days. So buy your tickets and then get your plane flights or hotels or whatever you got to do. Um, I would highly recommend if you can make it for the extra day to come to VIP. There's only 16 left now. Um, so definitely come to the VIP if you're able to. It's going to be a lot of fun going to the baseball game. Awesome, guys. Well, hope everyone has an awesome week. If you guys need anything from me, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm here for you. And have a great week and get that money moving and we will see you guys soon. Thank you.